Minmax is one of the earliest automated replenishment methods, which is now used across almost every piece of inventory software on the market. Its roots can originally be traced back to around the 19th century, where it was developed as a visual method where you could physically see the amount of stock in a carefully sized bin. The idea was that once stock reached a certain point, this would trigger a replenishment, which would bring the stock back to its maximum levels, without the need for ever counting the exact amount of stock that it contained. Since then, this fairly ancient method of automating variants has grown in popularity and is now used in various guises by almost every modern day company. So how do these approaches compare to our trusty old system of a bin and a line? Well, the approach is built on two conditions. Initially, we start by tracking the current stock level, which is typically the sum of stock on hand plus the sum of stock on order for every single SKU. Then, when the total stock reaches a minimum value, the system automatically alerts the user and a subsequent reorder is placed targeting a specific maximum stock level. If we assume that these replenishments are immediate, then the amount of inventory in relation to the min-max looks a little like the graph you can see here. So the main benefit of a min-max approach is its simplicity. However, don't let this fool you. Choosing the levels for our min-max is anything but simplicity, and this is where dragons can lie. Now, if lead times were immediate, then in reality, most businesses would reduce their minimums to just one unit in order to save storage costs. However, in reality, the longer the lead time becomes, the higher that minimum level has to be in order to account for things like delivery delay. So by adding this lead time to our graph, we can recognize this. Then, it's worth bearing in mind that one of the core assumptions of a min-max concept is that the environment is static with the constant demand and lead times. Now, of course, we know that this is far from reality as lead times may be extended or demand may be bigger or smaller than first predicted. And this can all potentially result in a stock out. Now, of course, business leaders are aware of this and adapt their minimums according to the uncertainty that they have in their business and the relative importance of a product. Typically, an ABC analysis approach similar to the one we discussed in a previous episode can be applied with A products having higher minimums and a greater safety margin. So whilst appealing with simplicity, the challenge of the min-max world is that the underlying assumptions of a static, constant world can give a false sense of security, as each individual SKU has its own economic characteristics, such as MOQ, lot sizes, and carrying costs, as well as those non-price sensitive factors such as expiration dates and seasonality, there are an awful lot of factors which need to be combined to get any sort of rational min-max level. And this can only be properly accounted for through a dynamic approach, which is constantly refined based on the latest information. As such, without any prioritization about the overall importance of a product or an appreciation of the impact of related products, the min-max method should be treated with caution and used as a starting point rather than a final solution. So let us know what you think. Do you agree or does min-max work for you?